It's Joey's partner Nathan. Oh yeah, good. Uh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> hey, Literally you, you, the you. first yeah, I know. text to come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, how you doing? My name is Courtney J. Welcome back to my channel. Now today I do have a guest. It is a follow-up episode to the one what I did with Joey. This is Joey's partner Nathan. Hi guys, how are you? Now today we are going to talk about Nathan's life and how his coming out experience went and all the in the outer workings of how that works pretty much. So first of all Nathan, when did you come out? So I came out in sick form, um, so that was around 17, 18. Okay. Yeah. Um, I came, came out to my friends first, um, just because I was around them the most. It was actually really weird because I didn't come out to any of my close friends first. It was actually someone I never actually hung around with much at all. So almost like like a stranger, or like, yeah. like more of an acquaintance. Like yeah, I, yeah. I have found that sometimes. Like I remember when I used to go online, um, I talked to a few people, and I actually came out to a few people because um, I found it easier to kind of like express myself to someone where. It's not that I don't know if they will judge me or not, it's just that I could kind of go, well, I don't really know you, so mm. like, I could kind of like, you're almost cannon fodder to me, it's just a test run to make me feel a little bit okay with it. Mm. It wasn't necessarily intentional either, it was, during um, sick form I was really quite, I had a period of depression which I was dealing with myself, I never told anyone about it, but it was just because I was realising that, oh, I might actually be gay, what does this mean, like, how will my life go from here, like, what what am I going to do, basically, and I basically just shut down, I didn't talk to anyone, I was sitting on my own at lunch, and pretty much just shut all of my friends away, and then it actually took that one guy to, to message me on Facebook that later that day, saying, look, I've noticed you're feeling really down, like, what's up? And I just poured my heart out to him, like, because I just thought, like, I don't really know this guy, so why is there to lose? Like, there's not a friendship to lose. Like, if if he hates me, then so be it. Like, I don't really care. Yeah, I feel, I feel that's, like, one of the things that we worry most about when we, we come out is the people that we're telling, it's what is there to lose? Like, mm. if, like, with friends, it's the friendship. With family, it's... It's almost that bonding connection where you've been with them for so long, and if for them to turn you, it's almost like it's detrimental to your life. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think that was one of the things that I worried about the most when when coming out is who would I lose? Like, who out of my friends and family wouldn't accept me, and who would? So after I came out to that first guy, it, it gave me a bit of of courage to come out to my best friend next. And um, you, you talked about um, last episode, um, how would people come out to their best friends, like what medium should they use? Yeah. I, I tended to stick to the written form, so I'd often get, get up the notepad on my, on my phone and just write down all of my thoughts and feelings so I could get... The problem with me is that I have trouble getting things out and not necessarily putting all my points across. So sometimes, yeah, you sometimes like you, you almost skittish about what you want to like say to people. I, I, I feel like that whenever I'm under pressure, sometimes I kind of like I blur out things, but it's not it's not clear. It's like there's mm. no clarity to what I'm saying, and I feel like that having that medium of writing is it helps you with that, mm. like because you have the time to kind of go. No, I don't want to say it. I want to say this. yes. Yeah, we're with talking. I tend to say either not a lot or just not get my point across at all and that's a big fear with me so getting the chance to write it down, write down everything that I want to say and how I want to say it and I'll just give my friend the phone and say have, have a read of that and that way it's kind of like telling them face to face. So you actually, you actually went in person to yeah, person yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wrote, wrote I, I gave it to them? I invited my best friend round, we were playing on the Xbox and I yeah, just gave him the phone, waited for him to read it. Oh, my hands were shaking. They were so bad. And he was just like, oh, okay. Um, like, asked ask me a couple of questions. Like, <laughs> one of the ones that sticks in my head is like, 
So when you watch porn, do you just do, do you go straight to the gay section, or do you watch a couple of like straight videos first? And that that question always baffled me. Like, what a part of being gay means that you, you want to watch straight porn. videos yeah, first? Yeah, that would make sense. Like, I like uh, just from my own personal experience, straight porn is like usually really ugly guys anyway. So you wouldn't <laughs> even have that to benefit from it. Either. <laughs> I guess not. I haven't really watched much myself. But, yeah. <laughs> okay, so saying saying that, talking about people's reactions, that's one of the reactions. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the reactions what you got from, say, family members or friends like? Is there any which kind of shocked you, or is there any which kind of stood out? Um, I came out to my sister first from my family, and that was kind of strategic because I knew she'd be the best and um, best about it. She, I knew she had gay friends. I knew, like, she's sound, like, she's, I love her to bits. So, again, it was one of those that she comes up to me and says, look, I've noticed you're feeling down, like, is there anything on your mind? And I did the same trick, wrote on my notepad on my phone, gave her the phone, it was actually at our wedding. So she then takes me outside, gives me a massive hug, and says, like, thank you so much for for coming out to me, I feel like so grateful that you've come that's, to me and told that's, me. That's really beautiful. Yeah, and she's helped a lot. She helped me come out to the rest of my family, and actually. Um, so she actually she helped like she was there with you when you came um, to your family. Not or? necessarily, because again, like I really hated saying the word out loud. Like it was so hard to say that I'm gay out loud because I'd just get choked up or like I physically couldn't say it. So again I'd, I'd write down in a letter and gave it to my mum um, and she she was, again was fine with it um, but my sister is really close to my dad so she sort of helped mould my dad's opinion of me and how his reaction was because is she like prepared yeah, so um, she was basically like, you'd better be fine with it, otherwise, like, I'm not going to like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, like, stern of her, and I'm really glad about it, actually. That's, that's nice. That's nice to have someone who, like, like basically stood by you and like, helped you through it. Because mm. I, I know a lot of people, they always have that fear of who they should tell first in their family, mm. um, who's the closest to them. And it's nice to know that, like, with that sort of experience, that's something what a lot of my viewers could use if they're, they're struggling to come out, maybe taking a family member and having them help you because you don't have to go through it alone. Like, all the people you've mm. told can be there to be that, that shoulder, basically, to lean on when you don't feel like you are strong enough or capable. Because I, I completely understand with the whole choking up thing. Like, it literally is like, it's like your windpipe closes off and you can't physically say it. Um, and that's something what I advise my, a lot of my viewers as well is that um, when they ask me, I think I might be bisexual, I think I might be gay, uh, I think I might want to be a woman or a man or whatever, I always say like, well, the first thing is that like, you need to say it to yourself because if you can say it to yourself, then that's a clear indication that you are, you're okay with it. Mm. I think that's a very important point, actually. I, I never did that myself when, when coming out. I, it was a, a point of self-loathing. Um, that like I, I hate myself because I'm gay and that's really bad like you can't do that to yourself like <laughs> to quote RuPaul if you don't love yourself how the hell are you going to love somebody else so saying it in the mirror for example like getting to know that you're gay and getting to love the fact that you're gay is really integral to like help come out to other people yeah so you said like you came out when you were about 17 or 18 in sixth form. Mm -hmm. What about the years before that? When did you realise that you were gay and what, what brought, was it knowing that you were gay, what brought on the depression? Yes, um, so all the way through high school, um, I always thought I was straight. And I'd look for females to get with. And I, w I was a very sporty guy who hung around with sort of um, the same type of, of people and um, so always playing football always playing games and um, 
sort of surrounding myself with those sorts of people made me want to be like them. It was only until sixth form that I actually started realising and I actually asked this girl out and it was sort of this make or break moment where I was like, right, if this goes well, then I'm straight. But if not, like, that's it. Like, I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to, like, accept the fact that I'm gay. Okay. And uh, I'm guessing from that experience, you did you did come to the point where you decided yeah, that yeah. you were gay. Yeah, um, she sh- shot me down. <laughs> That's um, tough. I, yeah. I shot down. It's not, it's not the nice experience. Asked for, asked for a kiss and she went no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, right, okay. On to the next one. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, first gay experience, um, when, when I actually started realising that I'm gay, I started going on Google and looking for different sort of um, gay social media sites. I found this okay. one called Trevor Space, um, which is run by the Trevor Project. I, I have heard of the Trevor Project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's exa- exactly what it says it is. It's a social media platform for um, the LGBT community to sort of express themselves, meet other people, um, join forums and, and groups that they um, that they want to join. And it really helped me actually, just talking to different people, hearing their experiences. Um, and that's actually where I found my first boyfriend. Um, it was a relatively long distance. He lived in Milton Keynes, so it was, um, so it was about a 45 minute train journey just to go and, and see him. But we, we got talking, um, like hit, hit it off. But um, yeah, certainly things didn't go um, the way they were supposed to go. So um, we ended up calling it quits, but. Fair enough. Well, was that down to the long distance aspect? Or? Yeah, very yeah. much so. It, I was still in sick form at the time. So not having a lot of money to, and that travel, to take yeah. the train. Um, yeah, and um, busy trying to revise and um, different things just kept me from seeing them. So it's like it's, it's not fair. Yeah, okay. well, so, no. so it's completely understandable. Yeah. So with all that in mind, everything you've said, what advice would you give to someone who is was in like your sort of experience, like that kind of like in denial experience, and then finally realizing and accepting it, and then because it, obviously it's, it's very hard. A lot of people do suffer with depression from this sort of thing and getting past that is always the hardest aspect so what, what advice would you give to somebody to get past that? Um, my advice would be just accept yourself tell yourself that it's okay and it's normal love yourself because if you hate yourself then like what sort of life are you living like you've got to love yourself um, I would also say find people to relate to um, from my personal experience, I um, looked a lot, a lot on YouTube for um, gay influencers without even realising it actually. Found, um, I don't know whether you know them, um, Pentatonics. I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the um, yeah, yeah. There are um, two guys in that who made um, a channel called Superfruit, which was um, like really irreverent and. Um, I don't know what the word is, um, but it was like really fun, really light-hearted, and, and it's just yeah, just a bit fun. Basically. Yeah, and I ended up watching them most weeks, and it was them showing me that being this type of person, and um, without it being a, a personality, it's okay, and um, yeah, it's fun to try and explore. Um, who you are? Yeah, who you yeah. are? And that that's that's pretty awesome because uh, obviously when I, I speak to a lot of like um, gay influencers and stuff like that, and like I've never thought of pentatonics as a like an influencer in that way, but that's really nice that you found something which is almost a little bit different as well, because uh, a lot of people obviously look to people like uh, Davy Wavy, is it? Um, mm. And uh, like Matthew Lush, that sort of thing. That's a lot of people's first influences of the gay community. 
So it's really nice to see that there is a lot out there and you recommend basically exploring it. Don't always go for what's so mainstream. You might find something which is a bit more um, conclusive to you mm. and really helps you because it might just give you that push what you need. Yeah, find, find those uh, those people that you truly relate to. Um, I, I found um, Superfruit purely by chance um, but ended up really liking their videos. I, I didn't actively... Um, look for gay influencers per se, but um, ended up finding finding myself watching quite a lot of them. Tyler Oakley was another one. Yeah, I, um, I like Tyler Oakley. Yeah, pretty really good. Um, just because that's sort of the opposite side of the spectrum um, to me. Like he's really fun and outgoing and um, really open and talks a lot about himself. Um, and I'm very sort of um, inclusive, um, don't really like talking about myself too much, um, and really sort of um, introverted. So exploring that other side that I could potentially grow into was quite beneficial, yeah. That's really great. Uh, I want to th thank you for coming on my no channel worries. because you've never really been on camera before, no. uh, so it, it's not easy doing this. Um, and I really appreciate what Nathan's done here. He's put a lot of effort in, and he, mm. it, you thought about what you had to say. And I, I think it's really useful information for my viewers out there. So thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you for wanting me. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if you did like that, give it a massive thumbs up. And Joey has for 175 likes. So on this video, you can smash get... 200. Oh, get geez. 200. Jesus Christ, that changed so fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, get 200 likes and that would be most appreciated. And I'm gonna say, love, peace. There we go. <laughs> He's a chicken grease. I forgot my own arbitrary. <laughs> um, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. See you guys.